Hey guys, and welcome to the Windows and Podcast 24. We are here to talk about our new upcoming album this year, Time 2, and the ongoing pre-order for the Time Package. And for the first time, we have the legend himself, Mr. Kai Hato, here with us. Hey Kai, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. <laughs> Please introduce yourself to those who probably may not know you. <laughs> yes, what I'm, you Kai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm Kai Hato and I've been playing with, with Wintersun since the first album. What do you play? Well, I, as a drummer first. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I play bass. No, <laughs> no I was kidding. What? <laughs> Drums first. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I've been involved in the band since since the beginning and yeah, with with Yari. So was it 2003 or even 2000, before? Yeah, 2004. When I sent you the demos. Uh, 2003, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, what? Uh, what, what have you, you also played Nightwish? You've been busy yes, with yes. Nightwish as well. Yes, since the last, last 10 years I've been involved with Nightwish as well. But nice to be back back here with the, with the boys. So very nice. Yeah. So you're a very busy man. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Yuka? How's it going? What have you been All doing? Good. Me. Uh... You're also a very busy man. Yeah, seems to be very busy with Nightwish as well. And now, of course, there's a new band called Ground Shift that I'm involved with. And yeah. busy with that, rehearsing a lot. And uh, there will be a new album coming out in May, May 10th. And uh, shows after that, starting for the summer and everything. So keeping busy with that. And otherwise, everything is great. Great to be here back in the podcast again. So three bands. That's that's a lot, mm. lot to deal with. I, not not just so multiplying myself for <laughs> trip trip triple triple fine. I don't know. So you're a multitasker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Try trying at least. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what about you, Demo? All How's it here. going? All great here. Um, it's been kind of busy as well, preparing for the next Megadeth tour starting in about a week. So a lot of preparations, learning new songs learning guitar parts, learning backing vocals, a lot of fun. Yeah, we are all very busy. Yeah, I've been extremely busy with this pre-order, making videos every day. Just sitting in the front of the computer 16 hour days, making videos. Mm -hmm. Can I please play guitar some someday? <laughs> play now. <laughs> yeah, now, now is the time. Now, now is the time. <laughs> time indeed. All right, well, we have a lot of questions asked from the Patreon and social media, so we'll try to get as many as we can. So let's get to it right away. So first one is from Patreon, from Sam. This is for Kajukka and Teemu. Tell us more about how you initially reacted once Yari messaged you and told you that time two was done. I still yeah. don't believe it. <laughs> you... <laughs> I guess I have to believe it because I also finally heard it as a final final album. So, yeah, what can you say? Really, really. But what was your initial it. reaction? Of course, yeah. it, was, it was like uh, I, I couldn't like it, like you said I couldn't believe it either. But <laughs> then, of, of course, <laughs> it sinked into my head that finally, after eighteen years, this is this is over. Yeah. <laughs> this is over. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tim? Yeah, I think the first reaction was just disbelief, or or maybe like it's a joke, or or maybe you've like made a, I don't know, Norwegian black metal mix of of time too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's well, fine. I was fine. I have to say that it's just it's just amazing that it's finally coming out and super super happy for all of us but for yari as well that he found his way to finalize it and i couldn't be happier yeah i didn't want to tell you know before it was you know i was sure it was 100 percent finished because you know i don't want to like make any promises but so that's why i waited for the last minute and then i dropped the news on you 
So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we have Mr. Ap Cortelai. Teemu Jukka and Kai, were you ever frust- frustrated and thought that time too would not see the light of day? Or were you always believing that it would happen at some point in time? I stopped, actually, I stopped thinking about it because I felt that if it comes, it comes, but uh, it wasn't any any point to start thinking about it every day that mm. what's going to happen because it's it's all about it's going to come if it, if it will come so so but of course it was frustrating and 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 uh, a bit painful at times to think about it that we started already 2006 and it took so many years but finally i'm, I'm really happy it's the, the way it is now it's it's perfect yeah it's uh yeah frustration is one one word you can put it and uh but understandably it took this long because Otherwise, the album wouldn't have sounded perfect or as complete as it is now. And then releasing an unfinished album wouldn't have made any sense. Wouldn't have made any sense. So, yeah. Yeah, but I think the same. Of course, over the years, there's been frustrating moments like when there wasn't much happening with the band and and there wasn't much that the three of us could help yari with anything but but then i also just learned to let it go and not not to stress about it and yeah that uh, happy that it's finally now done yeah for me it was also very frustrating to kind of disappoint people and not get it done and then, then there's also a lot of this narrative that like because i was going through the trouble then there's a lot of like people like ah you suck why can't you do it but like for me it's like kicking a homeless person like why are you homeless why can't you get a house (laughs) so it was really frustrating at times but of course finally getting it done it's a huge relief and finally can move on to new new adventures and projects what i have in store yeah yeah also oh next question this is from guafer for for me i'm curious are there any songs from the early demos that were at any point considered for being part of the debut album obviously there are a few that ended up on the album but it makes me wonder if there's a parallel universe in what's in which one or more of those other songs made it onto the album. I mean, there were some some songs that I considered a little bit, but I felt there was like uh, I would have would have to work on there more and change some parts maybe. And like "Alone in the Moonshine" was one of those, and maybe just like "Fall of Stars," "Waiting for You," uh, "Powers Inside" was actually one of that could have ended. Uh, what else? The Silence of Night. Then those Fly into the Sky, Where is My Tomorrow, When when the Rain Ends. But I felt like those songs were a little bit too power metal-ish for, for the first album. Because the first album was a little bit more more heavier. There's a lot of growling vocals and stuff like that. And also one song co- called To the Mountains which doesn't have vocals, it's still an instrumental. It's one of my favorites, it's kind of very, very slow song, but very melodic. And that's also a little bit of kind of exotic melodies here and there. But yeah, there's uh, some songs that could have ended. And of course, there's one with the shadows that ended up on time too. But the first demo is just, uh, it's a, s- a shorter version. There's like new parts that I wrote later for time to the same thing happened kind of with the sleeping stars. The first demo of sleeping stars was like two or two and a half minutes. Then I wrote the bridge section for it later. I think right actually before we, me and Kai went to the studio. So yeah, there could have been other songs too. Next question is also from Guafer. 
is there a song from the legendary uh, legendary demos that you would love to play live? Well, I guess the guys don't know exactly all the demos names and probably haven't heard all of them. But you guys have any ideas? For Not me, <laughs> for me, I, I would love to play some songs from the Fantasy Metal project. I think it's uh, yeah. it's this kind of uh, Winter Sun Enziferum Balsakot style of music, which is kind of my guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the track and song, track and song would be fun to play live. It's one of my favorites. I think it's probably even better song than Death and the Healing. Just my opinion, Ooh. though. <laughs> oh. Well, there okay. will be five five albums of songs to play live, so there's a lot to mm. choose from, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now now we don't have that problem anymore. Thank well, we God. All... <laughs> well, <laughs> we all we all, we always had the problem because the songs are too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no radio singles. Yeah. All right. Next question is for Jukka. Aye. If you could play in any band that is not a metal band, existing or in the past, what band would that be? Wow. <laughs> it's not a, cur- a curveball for you. Oh. Um. I guess the other guys could answer this as well if they have some favorite non-metal bands that they would Please enjoy playing. Do that, well, Kai actually a... already has. Kai already has. Continue, Yari. Non-metal bands that he plays in. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a really hard one. I need a few few moments to think about this. If they more Kai knows any, please please fill in. <laughs> Not I would love to, I would love to yeah. play in Carpenter Brut. Okay. <laughs> but I guess it's kind of metal. Although it's well, actually actually I had I got one in my head just when you said that. Yeah. Um it's not a metal band, but they're so boombastic songs that it might be interesting to play Prodigy live. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. They have they have kind of like this really, really energetic stuff going on. So Let's answer that. All right, cool. Play one guy. Any, anything comes to mind? I think Pink, Pink, Pink Floyd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. We don't Some... need no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably a lot of bands that would be cool to play. But from the top of my head, I'd say Let's Set Pull Oh, cool. I had that as a second option. Yeah. I know I another band. That... <laughs> yeah, what is that? I would, or actually two. I would love to play with Billy Idol and Kiss. Yeah, why not? Um, why if not? If I go, <laughs> if I, if I go more to, like only bass stuff, and maybe not even completely assigning the singers and stuff, but there are a lot of funk bands that would have insanely cool drum and bass stuff. Jamiri quite has amazing mm. bass lines and really cool grooves. Yeah. So something like that would be really, really, really cool to play as well. Cool, cool. All right, next next question. For me, from Jonas. Is time to guitar sound still Mesa Triaxis, or did you end up using something completely different like a plugin? Well yeah, actually I ended ended up using a plugin. And it's the neural DSP's nameless plugin, but with the Adam Nolly, Nolly's uh, Mesabuke impul- impulses. I think Mesabuke is like my bread and butter, uh, the sound that I love. And I tried a lot of different plugins and reamping for time too, but it, it just didn't work. Also because there's, there's fast songs and slow songs. I think the Mesa Vokia works works better in like tight, fast songs, but it never felt felt right in the slow slow songs. 
But the nameless plugin is like a bo best of both worlds, so that it works in the slow and fast songs like really well. So that's what I ended ended up using. But of course, there was a lot of EQing and post production, and a lot of a lot of things went to getting that guitar sound. Yeah. Then Sam and Fre Frederick asked for everyone. What is everyone's favorite song on Time 2? And also if you can include Time 1. So what is your favorite song from Time 2? And if you can if you can only also include Time 1. Storm for me from Time 2. That's why I have the background. <laughs> and you got one with the shadows. <laughs> why would I, why do I have this background? <laughs> <laughs> and this demo answer. The way of the fire. Yeah, honestly, it is, it is probably much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my answer is actually yeah, silver, silver yeah, leaves. <laughs> yeah, we know you're out. Yeah, exactly. But I would also, I would also say, also say, I love both album intros, Fields of Snow and uh, When Time Fades Away. I really enjoy those intros. Yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah. But I'd be wondering. Why the hell am I doing intros? Because people only listen to them, them like one time. <laughs> I spent all this time making them. And <laughs> but at least they're useful for the live shows. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. There you have your answer. Then Tobias asks, asks for, I have a question for me. Time was written about 20 years ago, and people can change vastly in their musical tastes, skills, and interests. When you finished Time 2, did you find lyrics or parts to the songs that you would rather change or couldn't relate to anymore nowadays? Or did you actually do some rewriting? Well, I didn't do any rewriting. Because it was already recorded a long time ago, and I'm very happy about the lyrics and well, maybe some few grammar things I could maybe change, but not the meaning of the sentences. So I never felt like there could be any changes needed. So yeah. And John has a question for everyone. It's been a long time since you all recorded your parts for the album. How much do you actually still remember playing? And how much would you have to relearn the songs if you had to play them live now from the ground up or just bits and pieces here and there personally i felt quite connected with the, with the material because i i spent like two months in a drum room before we started recording like four hours a day i was going through my parts so i i kind of remember them quite well still even it's like so long ago so of course i would need to go go back and do the do the work to get the stamina and everything back, but I kind of remember quite well what I, what I actually did on the album. Yeah, well, I was like really impressed when we were listening time two. I was showing it to you the first time. You were playing along all the drum fills and yeah. beats. <laughs> like, how the hell can you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> what about not, probably I'm not totally brain dead yet, but but <laughs> that was a tool. So, so. <laughs> There's hope. There is hope. There's hope. Yeah. What Jukka, Demo? Can you still um, remember? Yes. Now that we even listened to the finished product, it was like, of course, haven't heard the songs in a long time. or So uh, I remembered almost everything that was actually happening and came to my mind immediately. And I remember back in the back in the days while rec before recording the parts that we had a lot of smooth sessions with Yari. Yeah. And hanging out near flat and skipping all kinds of parties and stuff to focus on the most important thing back then. Yeah. 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 I don't remember. You'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about My mom's team? Yeah. <laughs> what about them? Could you play them right now? Um, you have to... 
probably storm and fire because those we played live as well so those of course mm -hmm. had to spend more time yeah. learning but then one with the sad shadows and and silver leaves we never played together actually even when when recording so so uh yeah i, I played the riffs back back then but uh not since then so probably would have to relearn most of that yeah all right then we have x death has a question for yukka did you do did you record crawling vocals for time too that was one part that i actually didn't remember even to be honest, did I? And when I... for the first, wait a second. No, I need to. I still don't actually. No, you doubled <laughs> some some parts there yourself. Yeah, I, there was no your crowds in time too. No, because I remember live live did something in storm, of course, yeah. vocals and stuff. So that's why I kind of a bit mixed up, and I was like, hey, wait a moment, but no. The clear, yeah, did... clear the growls are in the time one here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when we recorded time one and the mixing started, then we like did like specific crawling session for time one yeah. and then, then we went on touring. So that the second crawling session never happened. Mm. Yeah. So there, there's my low crawls with a little pitch shift in there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But you can you can do them live. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, where were we? Then we have George. It's a question for Kai and Yari. All right, then. Which Winterson album, including Time One, is closest to your heart and why? Which Winterson album? Of yeah. course, of course, the first one because that's when I was introduced by Yari's music and and his genius stuff so that was really what kind of pushed my drumming as well forward so without winter sun i wouldn't be the drummer i am i am at the moment so i will have to thank yari for pushing me as well because we had really a lot of fun in the studio in the making the first one yeah. gemi gemi and, and he was like hey do that more do that more of that shit and you know it was really had a good time too yeah so so, so of course the first one is the most closest to my heart because that was the first yeah i have to thank you too for joining and coming to play drums i was originally planning to do that with a drum machine but then then my friends were like no you gotta ask guy <laughs> i was like yeah he's not gonna well then uh, just let's ask and then he said yes and i was very happy but yeah i would also say like probably the first album because that's how everything started but Honestly speaking, because we played this first album song so many times, so I'm a little bit sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the time tune at the moment feels like that's that's the album. Because of course, new new is always new. So yeah, so I, I spend so much time making the music and mixing and mastering and then listening to the songs over and over and over again. So it gets too much. So the new stuff always feels closer, but yeah, of course, first album was the, is the, the baby. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Where were we? For Jukka and Kai, should both Winters and the Nightwish return to touring, how would you feel about challenging but magical go headlining tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 go that, headlining. That would be a sweaty, sweaty tour. Yeah, go headlining. <laughs> yeah. It, it would be no no headlining tour. <laughs> <laughs> or what's this my question? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Of yeah, course, who asked this? Would be you, great. this is your I'm answer. just writing my own questions here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we do a co headline tour? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Well, I, I, of course, I would, be, would love to. to but even... would it be too much, like too long, two shows? I think that's what, he, what he's asking. Pro probably probably not if you, if you prepare, pre prepare enough physically, especially yeah. my, my drums. So, so I, I, I could probably. Pull it off, but I would need neither. Yeah, I'm sure you would. 
some 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 time to to prepare and and get, get, because I, I still play all the time anyway. But of course, yeah. with, with winters on material, you you would need a little bit different stamina to certain stuff mm. for the blast beats and double faster double bass. So yeah, but yeah, yeah, that would be a wonderful idea to to actually have and play together. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't agree agree more. That definitely yeah would be long long sets, but doesn't matter. Well, so we let's could... fu- so let's fuck it up. Well, we could play turn in thirty minutes and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can play all the all, all the slow songs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just play two songs, sons, and something else, and done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Where were we? Okay, another question for me. You said that you consider some of the material in the legendary demos, some of the best stuff you you've ever written. Which specific songs are you referring to? Also, did you record clean vocals for any of them? Well, yeah, there's some some clean vocals in some of the songs, but I would I don't think it's very my best singing. I was a very bad singer when I started, so it's kind of developed over over the years like very slowly and i still still don't consider myself the best singer which is crazy because there's other singers like devin townsend or sebastian Bach. they were like immediately well like when they were nine, nine 18 19 years old they were like insane so for me it took a really long time but yeah of course i like i said before the fantasy metal project that's there's really strong material and some strong material here and there with the other albums as well. But yeah. But still, even the other material, which is probably not that great, it's still uh, interesting. Wide range of interesting songs. So I think people will get a kick out of those. Then we have a question for Teemu. Which Winters and Solo is the most challenging to play live? And which is your favorite? Um, Winter Madness is probably the favorite. It's also challenging. Many of them are challenging. Maybe Beautiful Death is maybe even more challenging. Um, Storm Cho- Solo is also challenging. Um, Tell yeah. me about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, probably would say like... No, Battle Against Time is one of my favorites as well. Yeah, uh, and of course, uh, Death and the Healing Solo is nice to play. Mm. Uh, but but it kind of changes like uh, depending on what what we might be playing in the set list as well. Like what feels like the the favorite at the, at any given point. Um, and yeah, every every solo kind of has its own challenges, whether it's speed or more about the feel or getting the bends right and the intonation right. And yeah, there there's always like different challenges in different solos. Yeah. I would say when I was still playing guitar, battle against time solo was annoying. There's this one stretch lick, like Legado stretch lick. So it was always difficult. But then there's an add-on question from social media from Suven. What's the harder solo to play? Tornado of Souls or Winter Madness? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Both are challenging in that sense that they are well known. Of course, maybe Tornado even more well known. So so you can expect the fans to kind of know every note and nuance. And you know, when you're playing it, I, I always try to deliver like like uh, how I would like to hear it myself when I go to see a show, like like the original, like the album version, with maybe a little spice of my my own. But but uh, uh, yeah, neither has has much space for improvisation. Let's say let's say that. Yeah, it's hard hard to compare which one is harder to play. It's a different different things. Uh, Tornado of Souls, it it has also a couple of fast parts. Marty Friedman's phrasing is very special um, in terms of like his intonation and bends and vibrato as well. 
and uh, uh, yeah, Win Winter Madness uh, solo I've still played more over the years, so so probably Tornado is still more challenging at the moment. It's still a lot of fun to play. I would say too that Tornado of Souls is harder to play. <laughs> <laughs> for me as for me as well. <laughs> yeah, same here. Okay, still one one add on question about the solo stuff. What is the hardest? Uh, actually, no. This is a different question. This is for Kai. What is the hardest song to play of all all the bands and quest guest appearance you've done? For Kai. What is the hardest? Hardest song. songs to play of all the bands and guest appearances. I played over forty bands, so it's it's kind of hard to to refer that what, what is the most hard, hardest because there's so it's a li different level of hardness. Sometimes the the tempo is a challenge, or sometimes it's uh, that you need to play dynamically uh, differently. So it's sometimes it's it's a coordination that you 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 haven't played something in a while and then you have to pull it off. So it's uh, I have to say uh, uh, the, the upcoming time to uh, storm is kind of uh, quite high on my list. Let's say let's say storm. All right, cool. Then question for everyone. What is your opinion about meet and greets, and how do you feel about meeting fans? Would you consider offering them them to patrons for the future tours? I love it. I, I like to meet, meet fans, and it's great that you you see the faces uh, that actually are into your music, and they they support you, and they they are. Kind of the the reason why we go on the on the tour to to play for the people. So I don't I don't mind. I, I like it. Perfect. Yeah, I think we yes. we've always enjoyed doing the meet and greets. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's it's like natural thing to talk with people in general, but also then with fans and all the people that come to the shows that we share a unique moment there together. So it's always nice to talk about the same experience and different experience and meeting new people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and definitely we need to maybe in the future tours to make something special for the Patreons. Yeah, yeah. So they've been it's been really helping us, you know. Okay, next question. This is from Karot, and it's for me. You said in the AP Reacts interview that fields of snow and ominous clouds were added in 2011 when the album was split. Did they always have lyrics? When was the Time, trans time One Transitions written? And why were there no lyrics for them? Where I don't know exactly when Ominous Clouds was. Was it always there or was it added on in 2011? Can't remember all the details. But Fields of Snow was definitely added after the split happened. Because I wanted to make an intro for the Way of the fire, but uh, but those those songs don't have vocals, so it's just a couple of short poems I I wrote for those instrumental songs. So yeah. Next question is for Yuka. Yuka the man. Yuka the man. Are there more mm -hmm. supporting? Are there more supporting melodies on bass on Time 2, as you showed in the Time 1 Licks and Tricks DVD? Did you come up with these or Yari? There are. Well, what can you then, where to draw the line? What is a supportive metal, melody on a bass or whatnot? But I, I think it's like, like, like on Time Song in the bridge. Yeah, yeah something, something like, like that. that. Um, there's not really like a so-called so a solo spot, but there are melody lines that and really like moving lines that to support the, the whole infrastructure. <laughs> so I would say yes. And when we were uh, arranging those bass lines, yes, I come up with a lot of ideas. Uh, what I remember, Yari had ideas how the bass should go. Um, we sacked some, some things 
that might that sack some things and and I came up with new things. Yari had something in mind as well. That's how I remember that because um, uh, what I mean here is that Yari had a certain vision how to follow, and I of course I brought my own own spices in, but um, yeah, I that's how we work quite cooperative. What's the word in cooperation? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I wrote any supporting lines. I just made the original demos with the exact same lines as the guitars, the same same yeah, chords, and, and then you came up with those extra melodies, yeah. especially in one with the shadows beneath the guitar solo. There's like this extra bass solo or bass line. Yeah. And basically, you you wrote that, and basically I just you know checked that it matches everything else what I was going for. Like checking yeah. if there's any note mistakes and stuff like that. That's how I wanted to say it as well. But there you go, you already cleared the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. Next one is for Kai. How oh, yeah. how involved were you with writing the drum parts on time? Did you write the drums or play as is, or did you have some creative freedom? Yeah, I, I think we we created together quite quite a lot because I, I was sending Yari you know parts that sometimes Yari sent me the demo and I, I sent him back uh, some drum machine stuff that I, I was working on my drum machine because then I don't need to go and practice it on, on the real drums and spend some time and waste some waste some time so I, I might send him like three or four different versions and then he said okay this is so, this is sounding okay or whatever so like I said, I spent two months in a, in a in my practice room, like four hours a day, trying to prepare that I can play it live in the studio. So so it was it was quite quite challenging, and of course I I came up with a lot of things, but also some of the stuff came for Yari. So it was like collaboration between the two of us when we when we did the preparation for before that we started actually recording the album. Yeah, basically, I just sent the raw like basic drum beats no fills and stuff like that and i left everything else the fills and extra tricks for kai to come up with yeah so there's a lot of influence from kai of course because i why the hell i'm i'm gonna start doing the fills because i knew kai can do them so better much better than me so sometimes <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we have a question, question from Thomas for everyone. Okay. Winter Sun is my all time favorite band, tied with the Beatles. What influence have the Beatles had on you all? That's a curveball. I've been in the, in the, in the Abbey Road studios, so maybe that's the biggest uh, connection, but of course they, they, Beatles have, they had their big, big impact on, on the, on the music scene when they when they came up so it, they they did something something so so different than any other band so of course the the beatles was was a big big influence in in the past uh, which I, I i was listening to to the beatles more or less you know here and there but but it's not it's not my favorite band but still i respect what they have done oh. yeah high high respect I really haven't listened to Beatles much, but uh, high respects of all the songs that have, you know, you've heard throughout the years and so different, different styles that they created, the very diverse composers and musicians. So hats off. What about you, Tim? I actually kind of uh, rediscovered the Beatles maybe a few years ago. Uh, I mean, of course, I always like knew some of the like uh, biggest songs and stuff, but like really started listening to them like a few years ago and and enjoying that stuff uh, more. Really love the songwriting and for the time, like a lot of pretty innov innovative uh, recording stuff as, as well that they did back then. Yeah, I've never myself del delve into the material, but. But I've heard a lot of music, and I've always like, like love love the creativeness and just incredible musicians. 
And uh, I could never heard a bad song from them. I always liked what I've heard. So yeah. Okay, let's take a couple of questions still from social media. And then we're gonna wrap up. We got so many questions, so we cannot do everything with this one, one sitting. This is from Shane for everyone. What is everyone's favorite moment from the writing and re recording process of time two? Favorite moment, the recording process. I guess, I guess personally, my favorite moment moment was when I heard that it's it's finally ready. <laughs> so, because yeah. of course, when when you when you hear the demos which we did together with Yari and and I was listening to that comparing to what it what it is now so it's it's kind of when you feel the final and hear the final result that's that's kind of the the best moment for me because then the music is kind of complete not just what I what I do personally but what what everybody is doing so because it's it's a band it's not the what I what I play but but you know the whole whole thing feels now that when it's ready, that's that's the best moment for me. You can do you remember favorite moments? I can only remember pain. <laughs> <laughs> pain. Oh, but good that you said it in in the past and not present. That you still feel pain, but that now that now the, the, now pain, the is, pain is gone. Now it is gone. Yeah, thankfully. Um, Kai kind of emptied my head with all the thoughts that I was thinking of the best moments because in the end this is the best moment that is it's finally ready. Yeah. yeah. But of course there are there are really nice nice memories of all the album process and everything back then when we were doing it. It was so uh, flawless and smooth and super nice to you know work with all you guys and I think we have a great chemistry going on the four of us. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Then, do you remember any favorite moments? Yeah, I mean, of course, like now the the, the finishing lines, or or like after getting the album completed, uh, listening to it, listening to the final album together in January at Yaris Place, that was like, of course, very emotional closure to the project. Um, but I'd say the drum sessions. I, I remember really vividly like uh, I think I was at Sonic Pump Studios like just hanging out for the whole drum session and filming some some material of the of the recordings um, Do you still have those material it, unfortunately it wasn't my camera uh, I've been trying to like figure out like I think I, th I think it I think it was my camera yeah do you still have it I, I, yes I, I have the material in my in okay. my Oh, nice! In my possession, so I, 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 I was actually, yeah, I was actually going through uh, some of the old like tapes, like what what I have uh, in store storage. So there's a full box of all kinds of stuff I need to go start going through because there's some really cool stuff also from the first Winter Sun album recordings. Oh wow! Yeah. What really? Yes, okay. yes, I have, I have, that, I have, I have that as well. Holy shit! I want to see it myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will need to digitize digitize it because it's a. Uh, oh it's yeah. Like, it's like high eight and uh, on uh, like the on uh, other format as well. So I, I have a friend here in in my hometown who actually does digitizing for yeah. for old tapes. So I, I I was planning to to do it probably yeah. bef before the album is out. So let's put some stuff on the YouTube. That would be insanely cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice that Temu reminds it because because I was remember the, uh, I, I think my camera was there and Temu Temu was filming. Yeah, I somehow thought that it was Nino's camera from the studio, and then I've been asking Nino like, where are the tapes? Because he had also like those same kind of uh, tape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tape things, and and uh, he wasn't sure what it was, and then then I think we talked about it in in January or February, and then. Then the thought came that maybe it's your camera. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I found a couple of clips like me recording the guitars. Could probably post at some point. 
I, I also thought like, whose camera was this? <laughs> and where did I get these clips? <laughs> I, I, do remember, weird. I do remember recording with my compact camera, some of the, some yeah. of the bass and, and guitar re recordings as well. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking that now that we're talking about it, I might have actually somewhere in a box like this really compact yeah. camera thick tapes that actually says Winters on it. And I have no idea what it is. Hmm. Let's it reveal out. it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for me also, the, probably the Sonic Pump first initial studio sessions was the most fun part. Probably because I got to watch you play the drums and the bass. And it's always fun to hang around in the studio and talk shit. And I always love the studio environment. And also Nino, it's fun to hang out with Nino. He's a really fun guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think it was like uh, like four days when we did the drums for the whole thing. Well, something like four days. Uh, maybe you're, it was like five, six. Four and a half, I think. <laughs> the, 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 the total was probably five or six, but the yeah. recordings took... Probably, yeah, it was uh, really fast. Four, four, like four and a half or something. Yeah. 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 All right. Do we still have time for a couple more? Yes. Yes, we do. All right. This is for me from Hugh. Do you ever plan to do any physical releases for the demos? Well, never say never, but that's most likely not going to happen. But never say never. That's all I can tell right now. Because there's so much, you know, material, material there and probably a lot of people wouldn't buy it. So it would be like, have to be like very small limited edition or something so but we'll see but for for now it's just going to be digital then for Kajukka and Teemu I have a question for Teemu what is different about playing in Wintersun or Megadeth I mean are the songs equally difficult the same question applies to Jukka and Kai about Nightwish mm, um, well Playing in Nightwish, Winter Sun, and Crown Shift, all are very different bands from different metal styles. So it's just so nice to play different sort of great diverse music. With every band has its own unique techniques, how what to do and what to play. Similarities of similarities playing wise as well, but also very different music wise. Of course, so different that it, it's. It's just very nice to play diverse stuff, yeah. Yeah, same for me. It's a totally different, different kind of skills you need to you need to have, and and both bands present a lot of challenges in its own way. So it's not like which one is more difficult to play. There's there's different things I I never did before I joined Nightwish, Nightwish and I had to like learn some of the stuff like from the scratch. So. Also, I happened when I joined Swallow the Sun, I had to play doom metal because I was playing before that. I was playing like well, mostly fast, faster stuff. And even what happened with us when we started time one and two, because yeah, yeah. you had to. Most people think if you if you play just fast, you can play also slow. Doesn't work like that. You also no have to. No fucking way. It's totally practice. different different world. Yeah, when you when you play slow, everything. You need to think every every note what you play because when I, for instance, when I joined Swallow the Sun, I didn't have any f slow feels in my repertoire because I never played slow stuff. Mm. Yeah. So so every note meant much more when you actually started playing. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and of course, when we when when we had uh, slower songs with with Nightwish or Winter Sun as well, though, so those are sometimes even more challenging to play because you will spot all the mistakes much easier. When yeah. you play faster, yeah. things happen so much faster, so people can't, probably, especially live, probably can't recognize that you actually made a mistake. Mm. But, but it, it, it goes by so fast, but when you play slow, it really, all the, all the feeling and, and uh, the groove and everything, especially with the drums, it's so, so different. And of course, you, uh, I, I totally play different way physically with Winter Sun than I play with Nightwish. So it's 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 a different ball game. But I, I still try to think about that it's it's music first and not the drums. So play the music and not the drums. 
I think it's the same with guitar, like playing slow is totally different, like doing slow accurate bends or something like that, than just threading, it's both need their own skill set. What about you, Demo? Yeah, what do you think? I definitely agree with, with you all. Um, and like we talked earlier about the, the different challenges in different solos, it's also like different challenges in different songs and between different bands it's it's really hard to compare in in that sense um but um yeah i mean tempos is definitely one thing like winter sun music is faster than megadeth in general um and one thing where Megadeth has maybe more challenges is where with Winters and Material, I had to learn just Yaris solos and kind of Yaris style with Megadeth. They have so many different albums with different guitarists who recorded there. So I had to learn like multiple guitarists, different styles. Um, so, so that's kind of the extra challenge there. Yeah. yeah. I would say some of the Megadeth riffs are even har harder than Winters on Riffs. Because a lot of Winters are Riffs are straightforward, but Megadeth, some of the Riffs have like kind of different kind of interesting rhythms. Yeah, for like, sure. Like I'm even Go Simmons of Funk, no, not Bettencourt territory <laughs> with the rhythms. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, a lot of the Riffs, when I really started like, uh, transcribing them and try to play them note for note were not what I thought they were when I was just listening to them like casually. But then when I had the isolated tracks and tried to kind of really decipher like uh, the exact fingerings and exact like big strokes, it was like often more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Cool. <laughs> Can I hear those isolated tracks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done, Tamil. Thanks. All right. Question for Kai. Is there any All crazy right. drum rhythm Yari came up with that you find challenging? I guess the crazy rhythm part has to go more with the guitars that I tried to follow the guitar lines and tried to match that. So that was some crazy shit happening on the time too. So yeah. Wave of the, Wave of the, Wave of the Fire and, and Storm has some, some crazy stuff. So So that's probably the how I think about it, like I said, play play music, not drums. So I try to match my drumming with the guitar. So Yari made some really challenging guitar riffs that so fun. Made, made me made me work my ass off in the in the, in the <laughs> rehearsal space before I, we actually started recording this. So uh, yeah, thank you, Yari. Again, so it's fun to program for us. Yeah, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Then send, send it to him. Here you go. <laughs> but then he hey, can do it. So. Hey, there was actually, I have to say that on the upcoming Night Wish album, there's this one part that Thomas came up with, with the drum machine or, or with, with, with his uh, like demo that sounds like you need to have a three hands to play it. And then he was <laughs> kind of like, okay, probably nobody can play it, but then I actually could play it. So he was like, what, what the fuck are you doing? So that, that was... <laughs> I, I, I want everybody to hear that because it, it's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, I have to say I was witnessing it there. And it, I was like, it's on the new album was, coming. Oh, coming yeah, up, coming up, yeah coming. on the forthcoming, yeah. Kaito was like, yeah, I'm going to do it like this. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. Hmm. And But there it was. First hand, second hand, third hand. Boom. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's kind of the sometimes cool that, uh, like a non-drummer makes something that makes the drummer to to think about differently, not not the basic drum uh, drum brain that thinks about how to play mm -hmm. something, and then you have to challenge yourself in that way. So so I want to thank both, of course, Yari and 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 Tuomas to to sometimes to kick my ass in a way that makes me a better player or grow, grow, grow as a player. So, so to speak. Yeah. Same goes, same goes here. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. I think this is kind of, kind of follow up from Michael for Kai. 
Listening to time to now, would you change any parts or do anything different? It has been such a long time since the recording. Did your playing style change that would make you change some parts? Uh, I wouldn't change anything. Of course, there, there was these like orchestration th things that came on top of the of the of the main main instruments, but but still, it, it was like I said, it, it was the the picture of that time when I did it. I had that thing in mind, and, and, and I never want to go back and think, okay, I should do this differently because then it's like a never-ending story. That mm -hmm. you never fin you never finish anything. So if I listen to my first albums, I, I'm like, God damn it, this sounds like shit. <laughs> if I would say, oh, God damn it, this sounds great, then I probably haven't developed myself over the years. So I think it's just great that now I listen to the time two when we did together, and I, I was really proud of everybody what we have done together and and how it is, and it was the picture of that time what we did back in two thousand six. Yeah. So, well, so it's a, it's would, a mixture yeah. of that time and modern time because it, it was mixed today with all the modern yeah, yeah. Of course, technology. Yeah. It's, it's, it yeah. sounds, still sounds yeah. modern and fresh, but it's it was made back in the days. But of course, we still have the same brain where everything yeah. comes from because every, everything hopefully comes from here before you can actually pull it pull it out. So so I still kind of understand what I played and how I did it. So there's no mystery about it. But of course. I wouldn't change anything at, at this point, what I heard. All right, cool. Next one is from Harold and it's for me. Do you still remember the time you composed The Way of the Fire? How did the symphonic part at the last third of the song come together? Well, yeah, I kind of remember how I just came up the first riff. Do, 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 do. And just came up with the chords, and that's how I usually, you know, build every song. Start with a very simple idea and just build on that. And then the last, I think he meant the part after the solo, and there's this kind of orchestral part before the heavy instruments come again. So it's just, uh, and that that was the melody, kind of the second chorus of the song. So I just. Uh, Use the chords and the melody, and did that with symphonic instruments, and then added some extra, extra counter melodies like with the erhus and stuff like that. So it's when it, when it's all together, it might sound like it's difficult, but when you tear it in, you know, different parts, it all makes sense, and it's not really that difficult. But yeah. Yeah, sometimes the orchestrations may make more sense that it doesn't mean that what, what one instrument is playing, but what, what they are doing together. So the orchestration is always sometimes the challenge that you, you fit everything together. And then it might might sound complex, but it's actually not. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's the kind of the magic trick of music. When you put everything together, it sounds way bigger than the, all the separate parts or the isolated tracks. Yeah, actually, there's the same. Same. If you, are, if you are remember the in in the way of the fire, it, this double ride pattern where I play. Yeah. It it goes uh, the the basic music goes in three, but I play on four four on top of that, so it it kind of overloops. Oh everything. yeah, that was yeah. I, I forgot that that crazy part. It's really I mean, really I know that I know this left and right thing, but I didn't remember that it was on four on top of three. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. It's it's like a like a double paradiddle played with snare drum and two right symbols, but it starts with the right hand. So the snare drum plays the downbeats, but it's orchestrated in a way that it goes like it goes like this on top of the music. So it's when you listen to and, with the headphones, it sounds really weird. <laughs> you like to do weird, weird <laughs> drum things. <laughs> yeah, I know when you play, you know, the hands changes place with the snare. Yes, yes. All right. Do we still have any more time for 
there's so many questions. Should we do one more and then wrap it up for this time? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's do two more because Jukka can answer this question fast. All this right. Is, this from Will Be Hard. Are there any plans to revive Norther? Oh, nope, not at the moment. That and that's it. Monster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. One more. Have you ever met any Metallica members? What do you think about the Saint Anger album? Would you consider covering any Metallica song with Winter Sun? I, I met I, uh, Kerbal. Yeah, yeah me, J, James and and, uh, and Lars. They they came both to see Nightwish play on in Pink Pop, and uh, James came on stage and and Lars came to the back backseat backstage area later after the show. And I have actually my, uh, I've been playing with this Metallica tribute band. We actually play in my hometown in May. So in a couple of months, we play in a local bar, some Metallica. It's been a while. So so it's it's nice. And of course, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of, of St. Anger, but I guess they they had to do that album as well in, in a way that at least they, they get a huge impact about the snare drum sound. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but uh, Metallica is all my all-time all favorite bands uh, still anyway, because Iron Maiden and Metallica was the biggest reason I played. I started listening to metal and, and play this kind of music. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Metallica is like one of the main influences for me as well, back in the days. And yeah, on the same show, I nodded heads just briefly with James. I remember that moment, but Lars I didn't meet because everyone else met him, but I was in the... I was doing more important business. I was in the toilet, so I didn't meet him. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you, Yuka left the toilet, always somebody came and say hi to the back. Yeah, once, I, it was, once it was Dave Lombardo. Yeah. Yuka went to the toilet and Dave Lombardo came to our backstage to ask for a wine bottle opener. <laughs> yeah, there was, there, was, <laughs> there was something else as well a few times, so I choose my, mo my timing very well. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tim? I haven't met any of them. Um, um, I haven't listened much of Saint Anger. Um, yeah, not much to say about that other than the snare sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't met them either. But I got the chance to record with Fleming Rasmussen the second Enziferum album, Iron, which was totally insane and incredible, amazing experience. He was a really fu funny guy and, you know, really supportive and relaxed guy to record with. And really amazing mixing and mastering, mastering engineer and studio engineer. So that was amazing experience. And also we heard some stories about the Metallica session that, that he did. So that was amazing. But he also said that we have covered Metallica. I don't think we have, we have all, only played like Black and Live, like yeah, a little no, bit. We, yeah, we just played this, this one tour we played in every city we played with, with some, like in New York, we played Frank Sinatra and, and in San Francisco, yeah. Ooh, yes. of course, we, we had to play Metallica. So uh, yeah, just a small clip on, on, the, on, the, on the show. So I yeah. remember that as well. But but I think we have never like played a whole song anywhere, at yeah. least li live. No. Maybe maybe maybe, no, maybe no. jamming jamming in a, in a rehearsal space a little bit, but no, not, nothing nothing more. I don't think we have done any full cover of any song. No, no. I mean, we did Judas Priest, Painkiller a little bit then. That, that's what what we played played uh, in in metal camp at least. I, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we did Slayer though in Tuska back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we did. Was, we, that, was, we did. was it the full song? It oh, was a yeah. full song. Yeah, it was full. And Pete, 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 was yeah, Pete, Pete was singing. From yeah, oh, North Pete. Which, which song? Which Angel song of Death. Oh, Angel oh, of yeah. Death. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't remember that at all. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a cool memory. 
Peter was singing yeah. in, a, in a stupid kilt a, or something like that. No, not a, even a kilt. There was some somebody's mini 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 skirt, skirt in, in, without <laughs> yeah. underwear or something like without that. Without underwear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't have wanted to. Be, I should have been in the first row. Yeah, it was in a, in that tent in in Tuska Festival we played. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. Wawa Wiva. <laughs> yeah, that great memories. Yeah. Well, I guess that's wraps it up for this episode and. Uh, Thank you for everyone joining us today and uh, check out our India Coco page and order time two with the time package from there. Because with that, you will be directly buying the music from us. So most money will go to our pockets and then we can reinvest that money back into Winter Sun and do yeah, you know, indeed, indeed. more amazing stuff for you guys. Yeah. And the, uh, the pre order campaign ends. April 30th. So do it now. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, very, very, very. Yeah. So thank you guys and uh, have a great day. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. you yeah. Cheers. <laughs>